Former National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki is still relishing his air of freedom after spending four years in custody and seems to have accepted his ordeal with remarkable calm and composure. In an interview with the Voice of America House of Service, the former NSD expresses his gratitude to Nigerians for prayers while in captivity and insists he has no personal feud with President Muhammad Buhari. The interview was conducted in Hausa. In one year, in Godia Zakim, Al Oman, Nigeria, the skater Teaka Adua, Har Allah Kauka, one Rana, the Gashio Kasamu, and Chankanka. Haka, to Godia, to Baka, the Mazama, the Zat, and he got to rule it up, would get the food. Al Uma on the city of Adua, Mammy would be like Nico, the Fatam to the Andhari. Bah, I win the Raka to Fatu, Allah, Saka, the Andhari, whom Allah, the other year. Would the following Munda Faida, I win the Asa, I mean, the Alpha, Kuman Kari, Latia. To Ganichi or Kakwashi is our local Chikosan Shaker, who would do Ayanzu, Naka Che, Kana, the Lapia, Koko, Akwewan, Abdeki Damanka. Alhamdulillah, ba ilmi ke damu ya. Cikin ko Allah, ba ilmi ke damu na. To yanzu ka samu iyalin ka cikin koshin lafiya kuma? Kowa cikin lafiya alhamdulillah. To dan ka shirye yanzu menene kiran ka ga ita gwamnatin tarayya ita kuma? A gwamnati ai ba kiran da ba ai ba. Ina ta dai ka san komai da ake abin da ya faru da mutum duka a rayuwa, abin da Allah ya tsara shi ne ake. Ba wani abu face wannan abin da Allah ya tsara. Rashin sani ko rashin tawakkali shike sa mutum yana wahalar da kan shi. Dauka wane yayi ma kaza ko shi wane dauka yana da ikon yana kaza ba haka yake ba. Duk abin da Allah ya tsara haka zai. Ai ni kamar yadda kake na dauki lokacin shekara hudu na gama yau sun kare na fito. Allah ka daya san abin da ke fito gobe. Ba wanda yake da ikon wannan ba wanda ya sani. To kawai ko wanne abin da za a tafi adalci kowa yana zuwa wanda yake zuwa musan lafiya juma'a kullun inda ya musu ne yana zuwa abin da ake zuwa ma kullun liman ya kudi da yana muku magana ku yi adalci ku yi ke gaskiya ku yi adalci ku yi ke gaskiya to wannan akwai dalilin da ake wannan a saurare shi a saurare shi to yanzu zaka koma domin ka ainihin gabatar da hujjojin ka ga kotu cewar wannan abuwa da ake tuhuma ka ba gaskiya bane ko da ma ai ina zuwa kotu abin da ya hada zuwa wannan akan an ce a fake ni da a fake ni wani ce to duk lokacin da wani zai gani za mu ci gaba da shari'a to ni za ma a fi gani akwai rade rade da ke nuna cewar zaman kasancewar lokacin da aka yi juyi mulki na shi shugaban kasa Buhari shi yasa kai ka kama shi kuma yanzu shi yasa ake mai da martani kai ma a kanka eh to dai wannan ni ban da sani wannan ni abin da na sani abin da Allah ne ya kaddara shi ne ya faru ba wani abu to babu wani takun saka tsakanin ka da shugaban kasa Muhammad Buhari kenan ni dai ba na takun saka da kowa ga duna ta karin haka na inda ina takun saka well, on that note of equanimity, I now hand you over to Melinda Akilami, who is standing by with business news. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Malque, and to all our wonderful viewers out there. On business news, respect for rule of law on the side of the federal government will drive more investment and create a stable economic environment for the country. And that's according to the chief executive officer of Financial Derivatives Company and member of the Economic Advisory Council, Mr. Bismarck Rewane. He mentioned this on our business morning program today in response to the release of the former national security advisor, Mr. Sambo Dasuki, and the publisher of Sahara Report. Mr. Omoyele Shore. The more liberal, the more tolerant the government is, the more co confidence investors will have. But that's, it's not the release of people, uh, it's the ob ob obeying of court orders. Because if, for example, I, I took the government to court because my tax liability was higher, higher, and then the government says, the court says, go and refund, and the government doesn't refund, that, those are the things that investors are looking at. If there's disputes, if there are disputes, if there are, they need remedies, um, the government has to be a good example of obedience of the rule of law because they said the law, right? I think that's clear. And I, I, this move now shows that the government is law abiding, right? And needs to, and it's not just one, it has to be consistent, it's not as the spirit drives us. Now, so investor confidence will come because. Nigeria will, be, will respect the sanctity of contracts. If we don't respect the sanctity of contracts and we want to be a pariah nation, then we are done. The Nigerian Stock Exchange says it will begin to implement its new free float rule starting from the first trading day in 2020. 
The new regulations, which had been approved by Securities and Exchange Commission SEC since May, were initially expected to begin on June the 3rd, but were suspended by the NSC. A major part of the new rules require all quoted companies to undertake a periodic self-assessment of their free float compliance, publish the shareholding structure in their half-year reports, and report any breach or shortfall to the exchange. Now, free float, which is also known as public float, refers to the shares of a company that can be publicly traded and is not held by parents, subsidiaries or associates. The board of Dankote Cement has announced the retirement of Mr. Joseph Makondru as the group managing director and CEO of the industrial giant with effect from February the 1st, 2020. Mr. Makonju was brought on the board of Dangote Cement from Lafarge, Africa, who will be succeeded by Mr. Mitchell Ponteros, who is also the immediate past group managing director of Lafarge, Africa. The appointment of the new helmsman, which will be included in Dangote's, in, is, which will be included, is expected to be ratified by shareholders in accordance with the Companies and Allied Matters Act. Now let's check out how the global stock market are doing. They added more than $17 trillion in total value this year, and that's according to calculations by financial services company Deutsche Bank. The German-based multinational investment bank says the value of global equities, which began in 2019, just under $70 trillion, has now surpassed $85 trillion, supported by easier monetary policy, while political developments such as Brexit and global trade outlook became clearer. Deutsche Bank's survey indicates that the rally has been largely driven by U.S. market, with the S&P 500, Dow Jones Industrial Average, and Russell 2000 all up more than 20% this year. And that's business news to Bart Knight. is back to you, Gimba. Many thanks indeed, uh, Melinda. Looking very beautiful, of course, uh, for the Christmas all in red. Pope Francis says praying for a sh uh, softening of stony and self-centered hearts to help end injustice in the world. In his Christmas Day message, the pontiff called for peace in the Holy Land in Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, Iraq, Venezuela, Ukraine and several African countries caught up in conflicts. Here's Layo Adegoke with more international news in Around the World in Five. Good evening and welcome to Around the World in Five. Queen Elizabeth is stressing the value of harmony and reconciliation this Christmas Day in her televised message after what she described as a quite bumpy year for her own family and for Britain as it struggled with Brexit. On reconciliation, the 93-year-old monarch spoke of how small steps taken in faith and in hope can overcome long-held differences and deep-seated divisions to bring harmony and understanding. The Queen also gave the example of Jesus Christ. Of course, at the heart of the Christmas story lies the birth of a child, a seemingly small and insignificant step overlooked by many in Bethlehem. But in time, through his teaching and by his example, Jesus Christ would show the world how small steps taken in faith and in hope can overcome long-held differences and deep-seated divisions to bring harmony and understanding. The Pope is praying for a softening of stony and self-centered hearts to help end injustice in the world in his Christmas Day message. From the Vatican balcony, Pope Francis spoke of walls of indifference being put up to people fleeing hardship in the hope of finding a better life. The Pope prayed for those hit by conflicts, natural disasters and diseases, listing several countries. He singled out parts of Africa where Christians had been killed. It is not so merry in Hong Kong as police fire tear gas using pepper spray on protesters to try to disperse crowds at Christmas decorated shopping malls and nearby streets. There were no major clashes, but with impromptu crowds forming to shout abuse at the deeply unpopular officers who have been accused of using excessive force, police briefly fired tear gas in Hong Kong, a popular protest area. Hundreds of protesters dressed in black and wearing face masks descended on shopping malls around the Chinese-ruled city, shouting popular slogans. We want the world to know that um, Hong Kongers are trying to um, lower the economic growth of uh, the Christmas Day. And we are here not to destroy anything, but we are trying to um, let everyone to know that um, we won't celebrate the Christmas because we want to protest even on this joyful day. 
The death toll from Monday's bus crash in Indonesia has risen to 28, with 13 others injured. The bus, which was allegedly overloaded with about 50 passengers, plunged over a hill and tumbled 150 meters into a ravine in Sumatra Island. Traffic accidents are common in Indonesia, with roads often cutting through rough terrain and vehicles often poorly maintained. Now thousands of Algerians gathered to pay their last respects to the late military chief of staff, Lieutenant General Ahmed Gayed Saleh. The funeral held in the capital, Algiers, as officials and family members mourned his loss. General Saleh is said to have died of a heart attack on Monday, throwing Africa's largest country into further uncertainty 10 months into its political crisis. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan arrived in Tunisia in a Christmas surprise visit for talks with his Tunisian counterpart. It is the first visit by a head of state since Tunisian presidential elections in October. The visit comes as Turkey has ramped up efforts to strike deals with nations on the Mediterranean, where Ankara has been at odds with Greece over resources off the coast of the divided island of Cyprus. And finally, joining the feasted with U.S. troops stationed in South Korea as they enjoy a Christmas meal. Dozens of troops, some of them wearing Christmas sweaters and other festive clothing, gathered for roast meats and gingerbread cookies at Camp Humphreys in Pyeongtaek, which lies about 100 kilometers from the border with reclusive North Korea. About 28,500 U.S. troops are based in South Korea. You take a family and being separated from a wife is rough. But um, especially coming somewhere where you don't know if you're going to have good friends. But I've come to make those friendships. She has her friends back home. So especially during this Christmas time, it's, it's okay. It's all right. We understand that Korea is a demanding assignment and soldiers are away from home. We intend to provide an ambiance filled with comfort and food and great conversations to assist with easing the burden of missing home. And that's your international news around the world in five.